go. It's Git Credentials Binding Office Hours for the 16th of June, 17th of June. Sorry, wrong date given. 17th of June. Harshit, any particular topics that you wanted to bring? Yeah. Um, should we, I mean, should we discuss the code today? That would, that would be great with me. I was just attempting to show a test failure with, uh, by experimenting with the code, I was expecting it to fail because I think it had failed for me locally, but I don't see the failure when I run it now. And so I am, I am at the moment a little bit perplexed. I was expecting to see failures and didn't. And so I would love to have a discussion of the code. Uh, which test are you talking about, Mark? In my case, it was the test freestyle project. Okay, the freestyle that, project. Okay. Yeah, so it's using a shell step to echo the mm -hmm. git username and git password values to an auth.txt file, but one of the values of git password has an ampersand in it, and the shell should treat that as a as a special case and attempt to put the job in the background and um, not actually echo the ampersand. And the surprise for me is the test passes and I, I'm not clear why it passes. So I, I just started the, some diagnosis to understand why the test was passing when I thought it would fail. But we, we can discuss whatever code topics you would like. We don't have to, we don't have to focus on my my narrow little thing. I can chase my question in a debugger as well. Yeah. So, Mark, you must have changed the code by here. I mean, you commented on on the code yesterday. I I looked at it, but I have not made the changes yet. Right, and and in fact, I hadn't made any changes either. I was trying to watch it fail and was rather embarrassed that it didn't fail. That was the surprise. So at line 165, uh, 165, where it says echo dollars git username and git password and redirects that to auth.txt. Then if you go down five or 10 lines, you'll see there's an assertion that the, the very last line on 178 is that it expects to find exactly that text, username, the literal colon, and the password mm -hmm. in the yeah. file auth.txt, and it succeeds. At least in my case, it does. And now I need to check the CI job. Maybe the CI job failed and, and would tell me something. Just a minute. Test. Tests. Test result, okay. Yeah, okay, so the test result, oh, oh, maybe that's the reason. Okay, <laughs> all right, for, for whatever reason on the, on the continuous integration server, it's showing the failures only on Windows and that's where I was running the last time I was seeing test failures. So I, I can't explain why uh, read and execute permissions to be set, huh? Interesting. So no, so the te the failures on on the CI job are unrelated to the to the uh, the thing that. Well, maybe. Okay, no, one of them. Good. All right, phew, that's a relief one of them is failing in a way that I might have expected. One of the six failures on the on ci.jenkins.io are failing as I expected. Okay. I mean, the, uh, I mean the, most of the failures are in the generate git script write test. <clears throat> right, five of the, it looks like five of yeah. the six are, it and is. those, I assume you'll just have to adapt the test because 
you don't need to worry about read and yeah. execute permissions on a Windows computer. Okay, okay, but I changed the code. I changed the code yesterday because of the, those failures. So I changed it to this. I am oh, I'm on. like, okay. Go ahead. So I'm casting the file path into a file, uh, file instance, and then I'm setting the permissions, like set readable, set executable on that. And that fixed a test for you? Because on Windows, I would expect that's that's should be not needed, but I guess I haven't looked at yeah. At the code elsewhere. Let me let me check. Uh, no, I changed the test because ch mode won't work on Windows, so I right. have to change it to set a can read can read provided. I think it's a method provided by file. Oh yeah, where is that? Uh, this yeah, here it is. Yeah, but but. I think that should be, I mean, the, the mm -hmm. can, can execute is a, is a conditional, right? You're asking a question mm -hmm. and asserting that it's true. Mm -hmm. Yes. But as you mentioned earlier, like the, with dot bat extension, it will always be executable. So <clears throat> I think so. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't think there's an executable bit in windows. If I remember it. Not as far as I know. Yeah, let me look. There was a case where I had to do some POSIX based file permission setup, and there may be something similar for Windows, but that was for private keys, not for not for username password. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so I'm not, I'm not sure why we're, well, needs more work to, to fix the failures on the CI job. The one that is interesting to me is the fourth one in on the CI job, the one, oh, no, third maybe. Nope. Nope. Huh. Where is it? Ah, yes. Okay. So this the one that has the the ampersand character in it, because ampersand oh. is also a special character in the in bat. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this confused me a lot. And, uh, but I, I okay. go ahead. No, Mark, you can go ahead, please. I think that we may be able to work around it with that ENV technique that I mentioned, or in bat, it's the set technique. Let me see if I can check it while we're, while we're all here together. Okay, from my command window, set, find str, comp. Yeah, okay, so I think there is a, I think there's a solution for us with with bat that will let that test pass and and i i don't think we need the can execute or the can so maybe maybe harshit you can tell us tell us again tell share with us again what caused you to try to set the execution permissions so like when i was debugging the test case so the ch mode well, it was returning minus one, which is not, which was causing the failure of the test. So mm -hmm. I thought of converting the file path into a file instance and then checking the permissions. So I thought that would be feasible in Windows. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And I would assume that the answer can execute and can read for those batch files both comes back true. Does this test pass for you? Mm, yeah, this is passing. Although I, I can check, I mean, I can check it. Like I can debug the test and can halt it and then go to the temporary file folder and then I guess can check with the properties of that, but uh, not tested it. Okay, say that again for me. You tested the properties? Uh, no, uh, I was saying that uh, I can like debug the test, set a breakpoint and uh, go manually go to the temporary directory created by this test and check the bad file properties for that, permissions uh -huh. on that. Well, I will test it if it is like, I will test it without setting the permissions and with setting the permissions and if they are both, you know, there's no difference then they know they and I don't think there's any need for this step for converting the file path into file instance. We can directly go with the file path then. Okay. Yeah, so I really do want to see. So I assume that what you're showing us on screen is not yet committed and not yet pushed or is at least not yet pushed. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, also one thing. So I have added I don't know what is there. Uh, yeah, this line. This is platform dependent new line character, which was missing in the previous commits. Or ah, okay, and that that is is that because the the batch file was using a Unix line terminator? Mm, yeah. Exactly. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, very glad that you so. So system.line separator then is actually a string and it's a two character string on Windows? Yeah, uh, the carriage return and then a line field. Yeah. Interesting. Didn't realize that, great, thank you, okay. That gets to be a fun fight in Git when you have uh, some people on Linux and some people on Windows and <laughs> not everyone's converting. <laughs> and now the having your seeing your IDE hints there, um, it's listing the encoding on the right as null. Don't you want it as UTF-8? Uh, it, my, I mean, it picks up the default encoding by the system, so I have not changed it. Ah, okay. Let's see, so encoding uh, default platform default coding on the remote machine. Got it. Okay. So probably best to leave it null then, rather than explicitly call for UTF-8, just in case somebody's running on a uh, an IBM with an IBM mainframe with without running Linux. Okay. So, I mean, these are, so these are the changes I have made till yesterday. I was working on the test cases and I have to work on this area, the get get tool instance. I mean, we. I ha, I'm testing using different diff, uh, different instance for Git tool instances. So I'm using JGit tool, JGit Apache to test that it does not work on. Or the authentication process does not work on 
all of these git implementations and only this git cli implementation but the variable binding will be provide, will be provided to all the git implementations so and now i was curious there the the, there's a technique you could use if you if you wish to let you actually that public static the line 47 public static data can actually you can write loops in there to allow you to iterate over various things and construct that array of array of objects of objects so that you could do every username password pair with every combination of git tool but but that's that from for me right now this is already showing us showing us what we need without having to increase the execution time so i think what you've got here is is great uh, now tell us tell me the the expected behavior when you pass in jgit tool magic exa name i was assuming that that would be a failure because you can't use um, use get username password binding with jgit and yet I think the tests are passing aren't they mm, yeah so mm, boy, uh, yeah so I just realized yesterday that it is just giving the default git implementation it is not giving the jgit tool that we in instance that we need so ah. I have made a few changes in that, yeah, regarding that. So now, so now it is uh, giving jgit tool instance or jgit Apache instance, but it is returning null. So I have, still have to figure that out why it is returning null. Okay, all right. So you're still investigating that. Very good. Mm, yeah. Also, I mean, uh, if even if that, I mean, I've investigated that and that works fine, uh, this test will pass because uh, this is not performing any authentication operation like git command. This is only echoing the bindings that is provided by all provided to all the git implementations. So this is not restricted. This is the the you know the expected behavior uh, the what we are expecting to fail is the git command that should fail because that is the authentication proce uh, process that is being performed ah okay so it's it's not that we would we would consider putting a safeguard in there that says if you're attempting to use a credential binding with jgit we tell you it just can't be done. Rather, we're relying on, even if they use JGit to do the to do the clone, we will still pass down uh, username and password and assume that they've got a command line Git implementation available there. Okay. Uh, the variable bindings that I have created by default, the Git username, the Git password will be available to these implementations. The, all other stuff like generate git script like this code explains it so this will only execute when uh, this line focuses on that so okay so so now i've got to understand ends with any so if my if my git tool name is mm -hmm. git dash 2.31 won't that fail that test no it no. will only fail when it's jgit or jgit apache uh i mean no i mean yeah so this will fail when it's jgit or jgit apache so this specific line i'm talking about ah uh, uh, okay got it so it, the 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 question that's being asked there on line 56 is does the string git tool end with either jgit or jgit apache mm, yeah got it i see okay uh, because uh, if you can see like on line 
54, the set key bindings. So it is not checking that if the implementation is git CLI, git J git or J git Apache. So these will be available to all the implementation. If we include this under under the stay 56 statement, then it won't be available. So it's upon us if we want it or not. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Mark, uh, can we have a custom name um, for uh, JGit or JGit Apache? Uh, Cannot. They are they are hard coded magic. So, uh, is can we not have a, like a stricter check that we get to if it exactly equals to JGit or JGit Apache? Yeah, yes, that. So that, that that check on line fifty six could be could be made more more strict. It could say if it is either J if it matches get get magic the J get tool or the magic X exactly, then fail. Yes, I think so. Because I am concerned about um, a case where uh, if the git tool name. In, in a CLI Git implementation, let's say, is a name which contains JGit for any reason, for any weird reason. Mm -hmm. Let's end, end with JGit because someone's name has a J in it. I'm not sure if that could be a potential case. Yeah. The exact screen string should be JGit. Uh, if it contains, it won't cause a problem. The exact string should be JGit. If that's well, the case, yeah, that, it will fail. It, except isn't isn't the ends with any saying that if it were diraj git or or raj git they would okay. then they would then match okay. because it ends with j git even okay. though yeah. it's not j git okay. yeah, it's the string in the check-ins installation right <clears throat> uh yeah well i think this method I am. I will read the Java documentation of this method, but I think that this is matching the entire string rather than the end. I think that because uh, I will work on that Raj Git case as well and see if it fails. So uh, let's say if we have um, three Git CLI Git installations, how do we choose which one to use? Uh, yeah, we, so yeah. So, yes, 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 I know. So the uh, so from what I have understand, like so the name hmm. should be if the name is default, then it will go with with default. If the name is not default, then it would go with with the first implementation that the at index zero. So yeah. Okay. Hmm. okay. So are you checking if that installation can work on the particular node where this code is running? Let's say you, you take the first uh, implement installation. Are you, are you validating if that installation is work is working on that node? Yeah. If, it is git then it will work based on the yeah, git exe name uh, if it's not git it won't, it won't work but it's totally dependent on the git exe name uh, that is provided so one i have created see up this here so yeah where is that i think yeah uh, so on line 34 it is returning the git exe name for that. But it's so it, do okay. So isn't isn't line thirty three though doing okay? I'm going to have to go do some research separately. But I thought that line thirty three said, "Return me the git tool hmm. for the Jenkins controller." The Jenkins.get there says. 
give me the node that is the Jenkins controller. So that's not the agent that will be running the job. That's truly the Jenkins controller, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. So, so, and now we, we, I think we correctly can assume that there is a, a command line get on the Jenkins controller. That's, that's to me seems like a safe assumption, but I thought that Rishab's question was what happens if the to, get tool on the controller is named git and the get tool on the agent, let's say it's a CentOS 8 machine that I had to install a brand new version of git because of the ancient thing that's there. And it's called git-2.32. Yes, yes, that's my question. And let's say if, if it's an older, uh, if it's a machine where the git version in the controller is not compatible with the older machine. Agent. I mean, we, we, are we talking about the name or the git exe? Like the two fields, like the name and the installation name. So. Yeah, I, th I thought actually yeah. we were we were talking on line 26 about a, a git tool object. Okay. Right, so on 26, it's, it's asking, give me the descriptor for, and I assume that over on the right hand side of line 26, there is probably something that yeah, so you're looking it up by the name that was passed in and this or not passed in by the name default in this case. So what you're doing there is looking up looking Seems up like on the default installation. Right. So I, I remember that I wrote some code uh, in the Git tool through that class where I was iterating through all the possible Git installations for a particular agent and then I I check each of them, uh, which one is valid for the agent. And I just, uh, I assumed that there would be one. If there's more than one, then I choose the first one. If there are like more than two, one options to um, run for a particular agent, I choose the first one. And then I proceed forward. I did something like that. For me. Yeah, see, I, I think it, this one may be, worth, may be worth some interactive testing just to see what it means if we've got different Git tools available in the, in the Jenkins controller. Because I, I, I apologize, Harshit, but I'm not sure how to tell you. I, I can tell you what things I would think to check. I would check if I define a Git tool on my controller named Git, the default. And then on an agent, I define a, an installation say a Windows agent and call it git-2.32, um, that would give me two, two implementations and I could, I could then double check that does it do the right thing in both cases. I mean, Risha mentioned in the Git, uh, uh, the Git chat, like oh, we could use the credentials for finding out the Git tool. I mean, I, I have not worked on that, but Risha, could you explain more on that? Um, where did I mention that? I'm sorry, Should I, I remember I, I mentioned the credentials could find the tool. I think I was asking you, um, how okay. would we find the Git tool name, like the user's choice in the Git tool, in the credentials context? Because I remember where I implemented oh. uh, this logic, there was, I could get the user's choice and then oh. validate if it exists or not in uh, the like environment I was running in. But I'm not sure if that is possible in the credentials binding context. Yeah. So then I was just thinking that do we need to do all of that or is it okay for us to just uh, get the default installation and um, work with it? Yeah, maybe it is good enough to, to just work with it, to take it exactly as it exists until we prove otherwise. 
So work with the code that, that Harshit's implemented. Let's do some interactive testing and see. Yeah, that seems like, yeah. So it would be a, it would only be a problem when the default installation, so if the default installation logic gets the installation from the controller, if you're running on an agent with a different version of it, and if they're not compatible, for that machine, for that particular agent, then it would be a problem, right, now. I think so, yeah. And, and I'm not even sure what compatible means in this case, right? Because Harshit, help me remember, is there is there any difference between c command line Git versions in terms of how we pass username and password? I don't think there is. I think the place we had differences was in SSH, not in, not in username password. Mm, yeah, yeah. So for at least for now, it may be good enough just to say, let's, let's just go with it and not worry about the complexity of, of not worry about anything further on the complexity of Git tool, use this, test it, get to the point where we think it's ready to, ready to ship or ready to ask for code review from Jesse Glick and ship. I guess the other thing is, is I mean, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but couldn't a user not have any Git tool and still have command line Git on their agent? Uh, they could, but I think if that's the case, I don't know that Jenkins will know what to do because it's got to have a Git tool in order to perform Git operations. So if they did not define If they, if they did not define a Git tool on the agent, then then I would expect, I, I don't, I, scary enough, I don't think I've ever run in that condition, so I don't know how it behaves. A, a, Git, a Git plugin without a Git tool seems like it would be not a Git plugin. Let me take a look. I think I, think I run in that be. mode. Oh, you do? Okay, good. Yeah, because we, uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, <clears throat> agents run in container images, and the container images contain their own Git, so we manage it that way. Yeah, and I would expect that that you've got on your controller a Git tool uh, that is that is then being used on. Uh, as, as the representation of the thing on the agents as well. Uh, technically, it can't do anything on the agent. I, we can, I can take that offline and, and research that a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, so when I look at my agents, I've got, I, I don't define a separate tool for Git on the agent and yet they have Git on them and I think they're getting it. They're, they're using the system-wide configured tool. in my case, named default, yeah. So Harshit, I'm, I'm not offering any help to you. I apologize. I'm, I'm more asking questions and that's not, not terribly helpful at this point. I need to spend more time, I think, in the code. I mean, I will create the test cases to just assure that everything is working as expected. Okay. Uh, just one last question, Harshit. Uh, do we get the node instance um, in this context? Hmm. Like, is this a is a class called node? Uh, mm, yes. Do we get that uh, in the credentials binding? Uh, 
somewhere or you getting that so the get jenkins dot get uh, can be casted to node but i don't think that is required in this case because uh, the git utils resolve git tool should i think be uh, like sufficient for us to uh, decide which git tool we need and um, maybe after that we can look for our specific case but then you're saying that we don't we from jenkins dot get but mark pointed out that jenkins dot get would give us the control instance not instance not the the agent we're running on no so uh, i have to work on that i i know more that but i if i will work on that that's okay that's okay yeah that's okay the, I, i'll also look into it i i did not check that earlier before suggesting that we should look for the user's choice i did not check if, if it's even possible or how we do yeah so yeah cuz i think you, maybe what you're saying is like <clears throat> ideally if we can check the context of what this job's going to run on like the agent node then we would get better information on like what git tool is available for that node that we're going to run on right yes sir yes, yes, yes. so uh, that's it from my side but i have nothing to say Yeah, and I I don't have any further questions myself. I've got a I need to spend some more time reviewing. Um, I I did have I guess a separate a separate question in terms of before we're ready to release, we'll want documentation on the credential binding in the README mm -hmm. so that we can point users to it. But I assume that can come later after we get code evaluated and tests written and things like that. so uh, i think uh, this so i think i was working on that the uh, yesterday so this code looks like in promising to me but i i have tested it but it, it creates a j git apache git tool in the jenkins and it's called agent i guess so Mm. Yeah, and that that seems reasonable to me. Uh, are you saying that 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 code that's in the commented block did not work for you the way you expected it to, or no, it worked for me as I expected. Oh, oh good okay, okay. oh so the documentation changes has to be made in the git client plugin or has to be created a separate document for that so there's a there's a readme file readme.adoc at the root of the um of the of the repository and that readme file is the documentation for the for the plugin and so that's where you would put the uh, put an example of how to use git with credentials and and it reminds me that I need to do a check to be sure that when we run with the syntax generator that we have as much help available as we can during the interactive use of the syntax generator. Let's see, let me I guess while we're here I'm going to do a quick check of that just to see because we've got I'm running a copy of the plugin already and I should be able to see the pipeline syntax generator to see if the online help is included in it. 
or if it's if it's even possible. Okay, so with credentials. With credentials, where is it? With credentials, okay, add a binding for git username and password. Okay, and okay, no help oh, credentials, there we go. Nope. Okay, so we're there's still some online help that we could add, Harshit, and this is one that we you and will I'll have to give you a pointer to where the file is that can be added for it. So I you okay if I stop your sharing and show you a show you a screenshot? So I'm going to share my screen yeah. and. And again, this is much lower priority than what you're currently working on. So don't don't shift task by any means for this. Just be wanted you to be aware that we've got more to do for the online help. So here on my screen, you should see the bindings and get username and password. Oops, get username and password and an SSH user private key as two examples of the binding. So if I delete that one and delete that one, we get back to the start. So if I add the get username and password, notice that the text is right here, but there's no question mark on the far right hand side. Whereas if I do an add of SSH user private key, there's a question mark right here that when I click it, it describes what this binding does. And the way we add this file, the way we add this help is we place a specifically named file at a certain location in the, in the, in the source code repository. So I'll, I'll see if I can find that. We learned about this as part of a project we did with SheCode Africa uh, about how to add this, this help. So I, can, I think I can find that and point you to the file name. Because what we want is we want the user when they're doing this to have the option of clicking that to get an explanation of what is the git username and password with some good text that describes why this is important to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, that one, let me put myself, I'll, I'll, uh, sorry, and I've not been taking any notes. Uh, but let's get some notes on this just to remind ourselves. So I think, uh, Mark, what you just showed should be uh, part of the PR, right? It should, it should go with. It should check with the uh, functionality because I think it's equally important. Yeah, I think I think it should be included in the PR. I think you're right. Seventeen. Okay, so need online help. Oh, let's see. So we we discussed. Uh, handling multiple Git tools installations. And we also discussed um, how to add help to the, the pull request. And we've got mark action and mark send location of the file to Harshit for inclusion. You can ignore my comment. Uh, as I suspected, Mr. Mark was correct. About, oh, sorry, about what? The uh, default Git tool thing. That's what we use. Oh, okay. So it, it so it's, you're, you're, you're using, you're, you're using, you didn't have a custom Git tool defined for every agent. You're using the Git tool from the, from the controller. 
or using right. the get That's... tools object definition from the controller. It's not, you're actually using git on the agent. Yeah, so there's just a default git um, configured and it has a path to git. And then Got the it. agents just have that correctly in the path. Okay, very good. Yeah. Sorry right. about that. Distraction. Okay. Okay, so online help and then Harshit, the other one was how to add um, documentation to the README. And there, maybe if you're okay with it, Harshit, I'm gonna share my screen so that we can look at the README together. Would that be all right? Mm, yeah. Okay, so share this one. And here's what, so if we look at how it's presented to the user, they might look on the plugin site for Git client, and what they see is this page of, of documentation that describes parameters and various things like, okay, how to, how do you, what are the properties that are defined in the plugin, and how do you install portable Git automatically, these, these kind of things. So. <clears throat> This is the place where I think what we want is we want a new section probably up very close to the top uh, because the Git plugin does its documentation. Oops, wrong one. The Git plugin does its documentation and it has a section right here very early about pipelines. And I would think we want something at the same, roughly the same place to say, oh, we're going to right after the change logs thing, put an entry here for pipelines or for credential mapping. And maybe it's just credential mapping. And then in there you insert uh, several examples. Oh, here's how you use with credentials to, to do this operation and that operation. So now what we're seeing here is what's presented to the user if we now open the GitHub repository, you can see where the doc, where that documentation actually lives and it's right here in the readme. Oops, sorry, we want the Git client readme. So this is where that documentation resides and all you do is edit this adoc file and insert the section that you wanna insert. Is, is that clear enough, Harshit, on what the expectation is there? Mm, yes. Okay. I hooked you up with some links, Mark, um, for Jelly yeah, stuff. Uh, so, so I plugged a couple of links to the Jelly files in GitHub, both for the example that you pointed out, as well as uh, a help file in the Git plugin. Oh, good. Uh, Very good. To look at that. Yes, yes. Here, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, so you've you've got you, Justin. You say you've got an example that you could show to Harshit. Yeah, me. I don't have. Embarrassed, Justin does not have a Jenkins installation up, but I can show you the code and what that Great. code does. Give me one moment here. Do, do, do. So if you remember that help, um, this is all like jelly stuff. And some of those help files are standards based. So you typically put the help in the same path as the plugin class under source main resources. So you see source main resources, org, Jenkins CI, plugins, credential binding, impl, SSH user, private key binding. And there's a high level help.html. And if you remember, there was a lot of text about like, hey, this copies SSH key given the blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of a convention based way of configuring the help. At this higher level, you'll see there's a few other things. Uh, and so there's a help for the key file variable. 
and that you'll see that corresponds to that field on the screen and you'll see this text there so this is kind of how that links together on the screen so that's the passphrase variable and what the help's going to look like for that and then the username variable and what the help will look like for that um, and Justin, would you be willing to open one more page to show this in yet another context? Sure. So open up a new page to www.jenkins.io. And there go to the documentation uh, pipeline. Let's see, is it there? Jenkins, Jenkins pipeline. pipeline. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. And then on this one, scroll down a little bit because on the left hand side we want the pipeline steps reference all righty ah yes and now Good there call. look for with credentials brilliant because i think that same text you just described yeah. is also included here in the description of parameters now we got to see if we can find it. Okay, so this is the this is the top level one. Mm -hmm. And now if you go down into the okay, well, yes, here we go. Oh, sorry. Expand right here. user. Yeah, there we go. There it, there is. it is. All right. Yep. Brilliant. So this is what it will look like both in the Jenkins screen and on the doc site. So now we would not find this kind of a page yet for the Git client plugin because it hasn't published anything yet that has a credential. But when, when the Git client plugin publishes, it will be added to the same list, if I understand correctly. Because for instance, here we see vault SSH user private key binding, that thing. And that one I think is provided by something isn't the credentials binding plugin. It's mm -hmm from the HashiCorp vault plugin. Yeah, and that symbol that you provided will do this thingy. Oh, right, right. So instead of dollar class and this yucky, it's okay, they're, they're trying. <laughs> It'll look pretty like this. Right. They don't mean anything bad by it. <laughs> so Harshit, are you have will I'll publish publish the recording of this so that you can refer to it later if you need to. But Justin's just shown us how you put the help in there. That was Justin, that was absolutely great. Thank you so much. Sure, absolutely. Anything else I should show here or hand it back? That that was it. Great. Does that make sense, Harshit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maybe thanks, Mark. Thanks, Jason. Oh. So I'm, uh, I'm a little confused here. We don't need to raise a PR uh, like at the Jenkins.io level uh, in that repository for this to be added there? Correct. We don't. I know it's it's like black, dark, evil, terrible magic, but it is it is exactly <laughs> that kind of magic. It's fantastical magic. So, so what happens is there is a tool that runs periodically that surveys all Jenkins plugins and looks for all implementations of those extension points and oh, okay. extracts the documentation from those plugins and publishes it to that steps reference. It's some work that Kristen, Kristen Whetstone did a year or two ago, and and it's a thing of beauty. It, it is it, it it basically runs a small Jenkins just long enough to load all the plugins and read their read their help and convert them into static HTML. That really sounds like magic. Yeah, and it, because all right, Harshit's pull request will add one little file, a help.html, or maybe three files, help.html, and two more for some variable or something like that. And magically, it will appear in that pipeline steps reference. It is visible in the Jenkins UI with the snippet generator. Yeah, it, it, it really is quite elegant. Yeah, that sounds great. 
Now, Harshit, there was one item. I had, you had submitted a pull request, so we've only got a few minutes left, but maybe it'd be enough for us to get that pull request merged. You'd submitted a pull request to Jenkins.io. Um, just a minute, let me see if I can find it. And I was gonna offer, if you're okay, I can just apply the changes and merge the, the pull request. But if you would prefer to, to make the changes yourself, you're welcome to do that also. So Mark, ma'am, it, it's up to you, Mark. What, what thing, what seems best to you? I, I am fine either way. If, if I've got permission, so do you see the pull request now on your screen? I'm not sure which screen I shared. Yes. Yep. Okay, so this is this is the change and some of the changes I proposed. The mandatory change is this. Oh, let's make it big enough to read. Okay, the mandatory change is this one. It needs to, oh no, is that right? Which one is the, no, no, where was the, there was one change that had to be made in order, no, maybe not. No, it looks like it's healthy even without any changes. So, um, question is, do you want to, let's see, there was one here that broke it into two sentences, another one that changed grammar, relatively minor, all of them. Do you want to accept those changes and or just want it merged as is? I will accept the changes. Oh, oh, here's the one. Okay, here was the one I had a question about. Okay, we've got a reference here to a gist for an image. And, and generally we would prefer that there be a copy of the image locally so we don't have to rely on going to somebody else's server to get a picture. Mm, okay. But you're, you would be okay with the other changes. So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and boldly apply the other changes then. Add this suggestion to the batch, add this one, add this one. Ooh, nifty, I haven't seen that one yet. You haven't seen what adding yeah, uh, using add batch suggestion. Batch. That's yeah, cool. for me that it's it's really kind of an elegant. Now let's see if I have permission to do it. Okay. Minor code review. Changes. Okay, that worked. So it will evaluate that. Are you comfortable with the change you need to, well, do you have time to make the change? Because given that I've got permission, I had permission to do that, Harshit, I could actually make this change as well and get that image placed into the images directory so that you can stay focused on the code rather than on documentation. Where is the image directory? I, I, I'm not sure, I have not seen that. I mean, which server are we going to put the image on? So what we would do is place the image inside the Jenkins.io slash content slash images directory. Oh, okay. So, okay. So that would be another PR for the image and then we will reference that. Yeah. What you would do is you would, you would modify or extend this pull request to include um, to include that image as one more file. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah, here I can, I, I, we, we can talk through it. If you can stand just a few more minutes, I can show you the steps that I would use. So this one is the one we want to check out. And there they are, okay. And the thing we need is just. 
this one. So I download that image and then we need to find a location for it. Yeah, so maybe we'd say So here's sort of what I was talking about. Now, if I did that right, make run should just work. I was surprised that we don't have individual uh, project uh, folders in uh, GSOC 2021 uh, directory. Good question. Yeah, I don't know. I thought. Okay, so the one I wanted to, no, that was not that. We want. Maybe because uh, students, have, they haven't published their blogs yet, right? So maybe that is the reason. It could be, uh, so if I look at, let's see, it was, where was I? This is the one we were just editing, wasn't it? Get, S, get credentials binding for SH. Yeah, there's the picture, good, it worked. Okay, good. So the, the, the thing that I, I quickly cobbled together seems to have worked. And this is how the change looks. It changes just the, the, the location of the image. Now the question is, Harsh, are you okay if I, if I just go ahead and push that? Or would you like to do that yourself for the, for the, the education of it? Mark, you can push that. I have seen a lot. I will try. I will. Uh, Mark, you can just push that. It's just just a very minute thing. Great. Okay. Let's see if the push works. It did. Very good. Okay. So that resolved that one. Excellent. Okay. Well, so when this, when this build completes, then Harsh, it, I think it's ready for merge. And so within the next 15 or 20 minutes, I'll merge it. Okay. And, and Justin and Rishab, no, is that okay for the two of you? Do you want to, do you want to do a code review before I do the merge? Um, I'm comfortable with it. I could take a look if, if you'd like me to, though. I, I'm 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 comfortable and confident with it. If yeah. if you, you, I'd much rather we stay foc help stay keep focused on Harshit's code and the documentation is great. It's it's more than good enough. Yeah, we can we can adjust later. We can always send more PRs. <laughs> exactly. 
All right. Well, that's all that I had. Sorry for going over time, Harsha. Anything else from you? So I just want to know, like, when should I shift to SSH binding? So I, th I think we need to finish the documentation and I would like to finish the release of the, of the, um, of the username and password. I would hope for that like next week, if that, if you think that's feasible. So we need, we need the online help. We need documentation for the username password pair. And, and then I think a little more interactive testing and we're ready to release. Are you feeling like you're, you're, if you're, if you're feeling like you're ready to start on SSH, you could certainly start a new pull request immediately. Okay. I mean, I think the priority would be to just, uh, you know, get your PR ready for review and merge eventually. The user credentials binding. Yeah, I agree. Let's let me see. So I had something that I said needed to, must have a change, and I'm not not looking at that yet to see what it was. Oh, right. Okay. I just need, I need to go through with the things that were exceptions for me previously to be sure that uh, I believe they're all resolved. So once your PR is up and ready, then I think, well, yeah, it should be okay. Okay. So Harshit, for instance, I see it looks like there's still a, is the, did the jelly file get removed? That Mm, yeah, so I was reporting the changes. Yeah, yep. okay. so I was reporting the changes caused by the merge of a test branch that I have created for the Git username password binding. Okay, good. So, so then I should be able to see that change in further review. So, yeah. So I guess documentation and online help are the only things between us and and more code review are the only things between us and a release of this functionality. That's great. So Harshit, are you okay working on documentation and on online help on this poll for this poll request? I'll do some more review of it. Um, Justin and Rishab, it's probably good for the two of you each to do another review of the current code just to be sure. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I do that. I'm good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. And Justin, do you want to be the one to upload the recording since you've now got the special permissions? I now have the power. I can do that. Uh, <laughs> did I see that you did it for last week's? Uh, I hope so. If you did? see that I forgot to, if I failed to, just send me an email and I'll, I'll upload okay. it for last week. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll cover it if it's not covered. Oh, bless you. That would be I'll wonderful. Like Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, everybody.